Welcome to the Pusey Vale in Wiltshire. My name is Paul Oakley and I run oil painting courses at Pusey Vale Studios. This demonstration is to show how to create a dramatic sky with different layers of cloud building up to create an exciting backdrop to landscape painting. To work best, painting a sky in this way requires a bit of patience and it's best to let the layers dry between sessions so you don't lose the crispness of the cloud you've already painted. This particular sky was painted in three sessions, each a couple of days apart. The painting is completed on an MDF board with an acrylic gesso, which I've roughly applied with a decorator's brush. You can see the marks it leaves at the beginning of the demonstration, and these help add interest to the clouds as you paint across them. I hope you enjoy the demonstration. The key to painting a sky like this is to plan ahead, so that you know how the picture is going to build up as you go along. If you enjoy painting this sky, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel, and you'll be notified when more demonstrations come online. This is the first stage of our cloudy day picture. What you can see is my MDF board and I've got an acrylic gesso on there and I've put the gesso on with a really thick um, decorator's paintbrush. I've left the marks on, it's got two layers of gesso so you can see some of the swirls of gesso sat on the board there and I really want that to come through as part of the texture of the picture. So th those marks are deliberate and it's a, it's a trick that a lot of artists use to, to build up some depth and character to their picture. So it's, it's certainly worth giving a try. Now, what we're going to start off with is a colour beginning. So I'm going to mix up some of my, um, my paint with a, my uh, mineral thinners um, just to get a really thin, diluted paint to put some colour across the whole board. So I'm going to do that with a varnish brush, but you can use any, any large brush you've got. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of my cerulean blue and a touch of raw sienna just to take the edge off that into quite a thin wash, which I'm then going to apply across the whole, whole of the board. Now what I'm hoping is because we've got such a, an absorbent surface here, um, I'm going to be able to paint almost, almost straight away on top of it. So that's a, one of the best benefits of having a couple of layers of, of acrylic gesso. So I'm just going to paint this on. Um, as you can see, it's a really thin, diluted layer of oil colours. Um, so you could use your mineral spirit or some turps or something similar to that, whatever your, your choice of thinner is. And I'm just putting that on roughly in a sort of horizontal motion because it's a, it's a sky. So with this particular sky, I'm going to be painting it uh, horizontally rather than vertically. Uh, that need not always be the case, but uh, for this, this sky, that's how we're going to do it. So, so this is my cerulean blue with a little bit of uh, raw sienna, uh, very much thinned down with mineral spirits so that I can get it across the board and, uh, and get a, a start, a little bit of extra raw sienna there by the looks of it, so we'll just mix it in a bit. As you can see, I'm not worried about the brush strokes such are quite, because I'm going for sort of a fairly stormy sky. Most of these will be covered up, but I'm, I'm quite happy to have some, some marks and some, um, some indications of where the brush has gone across within my, in my starting, starting wash. So there we are, almost straight away got that colour beginning down across the board. Let's thin that down a bit more, so. That's right, and quite a nice, nice sort of rough surface that we've, we've got there for the start of the painting. Now, just going to give that a couple of minutes to dry, uh, and once that's ready, we'll get on with the next stage. This is a painting we're going to build up in several layers. Now, my initial colour wash has dried, that just took a few minutes. Um, if it's not quite dried, just rub it down with a piece of kitchen roll. Um, just so, it's so you've got a dry surface to start on for putting on your next layers of paint. Now the next stage of the painting is to get our, get our blues down, our basic sky colour. What we're going to do is get that put down on the board and then again we need to let that dry so we can put our next layer of paint on. So this is a, this is a sky painting that's going to be done in stages, um, probably over a few days. So if you can afford to let your paint dry you're going to get a more dynamic sky because those colours aren't going to blur together. So uh, we're going to start off with some, uh, some French ultramarine and some white for uh, the top of our sky. And I'm just going to mix that with a little bit of raw sienna. Um, I don't want it to be too, too bright in terms of, uh, of that blue. And the raw sienna just, just knocks it back a little bit, uh, takes the edge off the blue. And I'm mixing that with white. 
on my palette here. And we're just going to start to pop that over the top of the, the colour we've got. Um, I'm not too worried about every single bit of the, the board below being covered up because I want that, some of those bits to show through just to give some, some interest to the sky. Uh, what I'm tending to do is, is mix the paint as I go along, so rather than have a complete um, layer of paint from, from one colour mix, I'm adding different bits of blue and different bits of white as I go along, because that's going to create a bit of interest in the sky. I want it roughly the same tonal value at, at this level, so sort of quite a, a dark blue as the, as the top bit of the sky. As you can see, I'm just, just pushing that uh, horizontally across. Again, letting some of the brush strokes show. Quite happy for those to, those to show through um, because it gives a bit, bit of interest to the sky. And, uh, and you might be able to just see that um, where we've got those, those thick gesso lines um, to start off with, then you can, you can see them just showing through. And, and again, that gives a bit of, bit of character to the sky that we're, we're putting in. You can just see there as they go across them lightly where those lines are. But at this stage we're just going just gonna to cover them up. So just get that layer of paint across there. As I say, mix a bit more as we go along. So that brightness of the French Ultramarine has just been knocked back a little bit with the, um, with the raw sienna. It just means it's not quite such a, an unnatural colour for your sky. It's more of a, a natural sky colour that we're putting on here. So just uh, add a little bit more. And just as we come further down, I'm just going to start to very gradually add a little bit more white to our, to our colour mix. Just to, to lighten it up. Obviously with, with most skies, the, the sky is going to be as dark as blue towards the, 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 uh, the further away you are, so towards the top of the picture. There's a bit more blue in the mix there, but I'm quite happy with that. That's just going gonna, just gonna to blend across and, as I say, give us a, a bit more interest to this sky. So it's not particularly thick paint, but I haven't thinned it down with any, any mineral spirits at all. Uh, it's paint just as it comes out of the tube. Um, and it's, it's obviously mixed with the white, so it's going to take a little while to dry. Just see, I'm just le letting some of that underneath colour show through a little bit there and some of those gesso brush marks just finding their way through in the painting. So I'm just going to add a little bit more, bit more white to that, just to, to lighten it up as we come down and as we, as we go across I'm just going to mix that in with a, the colour we've got above. Just got a, what's this, a number, number eight um, flat hog brush that I'm using. But really any, any brush that's going to start to, to get the paint across the surface is, is going to be absolutely fine for, for this painting. You can see there's a few marks I've got where the, the paint's slightly different shade to the, the paint adjoining it and I'm, I'm quite happy to, to leave those there because again I'm looking for this to be a, a sky with plenty of cloud action going on. Um, so any, any marks like this, so they're, they're eventually going to sort of fade into the background a bit. But I'm, I'm quite happy that, uh, that they're there and there's some different colours going on. So a bit, got a bit, a bit more blue there. I'm just going to think about where I'm going to put the horizon on this picture. Though it's a sky demonstration, um, I want to put a horizon on just to give, give an idea of where, where that would be in relation to this picture. So I'm just going to have a think about that. We'll just put it right across the bottom, obviously. Not where you'd probably put it if you're painting a landscape. But just to give an idea of where the, where the horizon's going to be. Now, what I'm going to start to do now is just add a little bit of my cerulean blue. This is going to give me a slightly lighter blue. And I'm just going to start to to mix this in with the, with the ultramarine beginning that I've got. And again, going over that, that surface underneath. And that's just bringing the, that lightness of the sky down as we, as we get closer to the horizon. So you can just hopefully see there the, the slightly different tones, tones and shades of colour as we go go further down the picture. Again quite sort of swirly brush strokes but still still with that emphasis of going horizontally across the board. A 
bit more paint there, I think. Again, still using a bit of raw sienna just to, to take the edge off that. You can actually see that coming through there. And again, that's quite all right because it's part of the color of the picture. A bit, bit too dark there, so we'll add a bit more white. There we go. And as we get towards this horizon, I'm going to just add a bit more white again because I want it to be fairly light as we get towards the horizon. Again, just letting those, some of those brush strokes just show you. I quite like that. That's part of the character of the sky. I'm going to take, the, take this line down to below where the, the horizon is going to be. And we can pop the horizon on a bit later on. And we'll just mix that in with the colour color that's above it. I've got quite a nice sky beginning going on here, I think. So um, we'll just get that last bit in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this done uh, in a couple of moments and then we're going to let this dry off. So um, I'm going to leave this to dry for a couple of days. So the next part of the demonstration will be once this has dried, because I want to put some, some quite distinctive clouds over the top of it. And, and if we're painting wet on wet, then we could, we could certainly get a good sky going on there but we won't get, get set quite the same uh, effect as we would as if we let this dry and then we can, we can paint layers of colour over the top without them, without them blending in. So let's just get that last bit of, of light sky down there. Taking it over the horizon. Just pop a touch more of the really light colour on. So we've got a great start to our sky, hopefully. Um, we've got some nice uh, colour changes going on. So from the deeper blue to the lighter blue to the much, much paler, um, whitey blue um, near the horizon. So, so I'm going to let that dry and we'll come back and get on with the next bit of the demonstration in, in a couple of days. Well, we've got a quite a good sky there, starting point with the sky. That's all dry. So that's two or three days after it's first painted. I'm going to start off by putting a bit of land in just to give context. This is obviously a sky demonstration, so I'm not going to put too much detail in there, but just to get, get an idea of to where the land is and how that relates to the sky. So I'm just going to use a bit of, um, bit of uh, raw sienna and a little bit of um, blue, some French ultramarine, just to create a a sort of bluey colour with a bit of white just to give me a, a something for the horizon. So not too much detail here, just to, just to put that on, get a line just to show where the, the horizon is in this picture. A few marks, it could be a few trees or something like that on the horizon. So we're just going to pop that on fairly roughly, a little bit more blue in certain places, a little bit more raw sand and others just to get a an idea of where the horizon is. Let's just put a bit more white with that just to lighten it up so it doesn't look too uniform. Just really scrubbing that in, no detail at all. Perhaps a little bit more raw sienna. So get a slightly different colour across there. Just really scrubbing that in with a quite a thick brush just to get an idea of where the, where the horizon is in our picture. Now a bit more context to, uh, to the painting. We have a bit of a bit of a horizon and I do some land down, down in front of there. So I want this to be a fairly stormy sky, a um, bit of cloud rolling in, some different layers of cloud. Now, why I suggest we have this dry background means you can, um, you can put some quite distinct clouds on, on top of what we've got already. 
so it's not going to mix in with the not going to mix in with the the paint that's underneath, which is why I wanted to to let this first layer dry off. So starting off, we've got uh, got a horizon there, so we've got some context for the picture. What I want to do is um, have a, some cloud coming in from the left hand side. So a bit of grey cloud coming in. We're going to sort of blend that down with the the clouds below, and then have some white cloud moving in. Um, probably behind the grey cloud, but we're going to put the, the grey cloud down first, just to get an idea of to how the, the layout of the sky is going to work. So for my grey, I've got some, some of my French ultramarine, some uh, raw sienna, a little tiny bit of alizarin, just to give it a slightly pinky feel, and some white. And I'm just going to start to put that on and see how that looks. So I'm going to have this cloud coming in uh, from left to right, so working its way in. Just that's probably about the right colour where I want to start. Um, and I'm just using, uh, it's not too thick on the brush, uh, maybe a little bit more paint on there, but I'm just using a relatively old uh, flat hog brush because I want this to, I want it to uh, help me give some, some character to this cloud as it comes in. So we're just going to pop that in. I've got this uh, uh, gesso, uh, just so put on with a quite a thick brush to start with, which means that I can um, I can use that to give an idea of of, uh, of context and um, a bit more bit more character to these clouds. And you'll see that the in certain areas here you can maybe just see that the the gesso's kept coming through. So just adding a little bit more bit more white here. So I've got my darkest bit of cloud going on there, and then just blending a little bit of white in. As you can see, it's not picking up the blue underneath at all. So, uh, so we've got that nice distinction between the cloud and um, the, the blue sky behind it. Maybe just a little bit more, a bit more raw sienna in there, just to give an idea of the colour changing in the cloud coming across there. And then just a bit more white, perhaps, just to just to blend that in. So take the cloud in into some of that blue sky behind it. This is where you can afford to be quite free with your brush strokes, not think too much about cloud shapes and uh, rounded tops to them and flat bottoms. At the moment we're just thinking about getting some idea of a sort of fairly rough cloud arrangement down. So we're just popping that in, we're just changing the colours a little bit, so a little bit more, a uh, bit, bit of alizarin in there just to give a bit of, bit of pinkiness to that cloud, perhaps just a little bit more, quite like that going in. And again, we're just sort of scrubbing that in. I want the cloud to be right there across to the, uh, the left-hand side, so I might just darken that down to a little bit more of my French ultramarine and raw sienna. And you can just see how these this should change in the colours. They just, just add into the, the character of the cloud a bit. So that's my darkest area. Um, we'll just get that, get that in and that's roughly how I want it to be. And I quite like some of these brush strokes where they're just quite loose and quite distinctive and they're going to stay in the picture. I'm going to start to lighten that up, so same colours but a little bit more white with that. Um, and I'm going to sort of softly put that in, put that into the cloud I've got and just start to add a little bit more of my cerulean blue just to, just to filter that down to, to come down to the horizon but with, with, with a bit of a softer softer bit of uh, cloud, some lighter cloud going on and just gradually adding adding a bit more of my white to that as well. Taking that down and taking that across. All the time adding a little bit more of my Cerulean as well, so you can just see there it's just starting to to be a bit more of a bluey shade, grey blue, and I'll just pop that down. We can tidy this up later on, but pop that down fairly close to the horizon. A bit more white with that perhaps down here, and again just let in some of that gesso. Those gesso marks show through. Not a lot of paint on there. There's definitely no medium, so it's paint just just out of the tube. I'm just going to start to pop that in. So we've got this, these clouds going on here. I might just bring a little bit of that, that up into this layer. 
And so there's a few layers of cloud happening here and we're going to add to that later as, as the picture goes on. So I'm going to start to take this a bit, bit further across so we've got this sort of bluey grey with my cerulean blue, a bit more white and we're going to just, just keep moving this across taking it in with the, the colour we've got behind so it's, it's like a layer of cloud just going in front of this blue sky. I just want to keep on lighting this as I go across so it actually becomes quite a light light part of the sky. So keep on adding some white. I might give my brush a quick clean just to get rid of some of that grey that's in there. So a bit more of my cerulean, a bit more white. There we are, and maybe a bit more white into that as well. So we've got this idea of the, the cloud coming across into the into the blue sky, so just mixing that back across. I don't need to take out all of the sky I've got underneath, and I'm just going to light that up so it just starts to blend in with, with what I've got there previously, but looking like some clouds are just starting to go in, go in front. Of the blue sky behind. So just working that in. I'm quite happy with that. I'll just take a bit more of the blue across. Again, some quite nice little marks there, so they're just going to stay. Just roughly down to the horizon again. We can just tidy that up later on as it goes through. I'm just going to start to have a look at this area again. So we've got some initial colour down. I'm going to just soften that up a bit as it comes out into the sky, the sky behind it. Uh, we're going to put some, we're going to put some uh, nice, big white fluffy clouds on later on. But I just want to give it a bit of a softer edge at this stage. So just some of that grey mix I've got down below. Let's darken that up a little bit. So again, my this is a bit of French ultramarine and some raw sienna, a bit of white. A touch of alizarin. So just taking those clouds up, just soften that a little bit as it comes out. Some, we're going to have some white clouds that are going to go on top of some of this in a, in a little while, but we're just going to let that dry off. So again, just painting the picture in stages. We're going to get this layer of grey cloud down, and then we're going to let that dry off a bit and come back and add some, some white later on. So I just want to maybe a little bit more of some darker bluey grey just in, in that cloud that we've got there. So just mixing that up again, some ultramarine, raw sienna, touch of alizarin and a little bit of, bit of white and we're just going to see if that can uh, just sit in there a bit. Again almost another little layer of clay going on. Quite loose brush strokes. And I want a bit more grey going on up here so like a, a little bit of grey looping round. Probably not quite so dark as the, the grey I've got lower down. So again, same mix of colours, French ultramarine, raw sienna, a little bit of white. I'm just going to put this in almost a different type of cloud, so some higher, lighter cloud. Again, just with a sort of fairly scrubby brush stroke. Perhaps get the paint a little bit thicker for that. Mix it up a bit. There we are, and just just taking that down. We're going to have some white cloud that's going to come in, probably over to this side. I'm just going to blend that in with the cloud we've got below. Just give it another bit of layer. And again, quite liking some of the marks left by my my gesso in those clouds.
We're back for our third and final session with this sky painting. As you can see, my second layer of paint has dried on the board now, so uh, I can paint on top of that. It's not gonna blend in, so we can keep those clouds we've got already nice and crisp and just add the final layer of detail to it. So there's a few things I wanna do. I just wanna lighten up this top right-hand corner a bit, give a bit more contrast to the sky, maybe darken down a bit over here and up here. Then I'm gonna introduce a light layer of um, new clouds, some, some lighter, um, sort of creamy coloured clouds going across in a, in a new line. So we've got another layer of depth to our sky. So we'll start off with this top top corner. I'm just going to be mixing some uh, some white with my um, cerulean blue. A little touch of raw sienna. I want to get that really quite bright. So it's a bit of a contrast to the colour we've got on already. So still using my uh, thick hog, hog brush. And we're just going to start to, to pop this on almost like another the layer of colour in the sky. Maybe some other higher cloud in the distance. And as usual, I'm just going to mix the colours as I go along a bit. So in some places a little bit more, a bit more of the blue like this. Trying to keep it with sort of um, roughly vertical brush strokes as we have previously. Um, and just blend, it, blend this in with the, the sky around it. I don't want to cover up all that nice blue sky I've got already but just give a bit of an indication maybe of some, some different clay just moved across already. A few little brush strokes there, like that one that I quite like, just gonna leave that in there. And we'll just pop a little bit more of the, the blue in just to give that a bit of a bit of contrast, just tie this in with the, the sky going across, maybe not quite so blue. Yeah, so just leaving plenty of the sky as it is. I just want that top corner to be a bit lighter actually. So just gonna go back in with some lighter, lighter blue over there. And I think that's, that's what I want to do for, for this, this section of sky. Just a different layer of cloud moving across but not too much more than that. Um, let's just add a little bit more of the, the raw sienna to that. Maybe a bit of an idea of the, some cloud shapes in there. Okay, that's, that's that bit done. Um, just feather that in a bit. Okay, um, the next thing I want to do is look at this area here, maybe darken that down a little bit. So uh, we're gonna Mix up, a, mix up a new colour for that. So that's going to be a bit of our French ultramarine. Raw sienna. A little tiny bit of alizarin. It's on a sort of a, quite a dark grey colour really. Just going to sit on top, not not really cover up a lot of the, that cloud I've got already, but just just sit on top of it a bit. So darken down this area. So just going to pop a little bit in there. Okay, we've got some more lightness over here, a little bit bit darker over here. Again, I don't want to lose all that nice cloud colour I've got, so I'm just really got quite a not much paint on the brush, fairly dry brush, and just trying to. To sort of feather that in with my existing existing clouds. And again, I might just lighten that slightly just so it blends a bit. Okay, and almost like another little layer of layer of cloud going in above what we've got already. It really does look like a big, big old storm that's pushing in, bringing a bit of rain from the, the left-hand side of that picture. And I might just lighten that again, just to, to a little bit more white into my mix, just to sort of lighten up some of these, some of these areas where the clay is just, just feathering out and going up into the, the blue sky beyond. But I don't really want to lose a lot of this nice definition I've already got, so I'm not going to do too much of that. Now 
There we are, and perhaps a little bit more of the, the raw sienna because we've got a slightly browner colour going on above here. Again, really, by, by having this, the, the underpainting already dry, it just means I can pop this on top. It's not going to mix or blend with it, um, but it means we're just going to get a bit more, a bit more depth to the way our, the way our sky is looking. So the, the trick is not to, not to paint too much new on there, really just to, to work with what we've got. And some nice areas of brush strokes there that I quite like. Um, but while I've got this gray, I'm just going to, just the top left hand corner, I just want to add a little bit more to that. Just darken this down a little bit. I don't want this to be a, a significant part of the sky, but I just want it to, to hold that corner together a little bit more. So again, using the colours I had already, so a little bit of French ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin, not too much of that, and a little bit of raw sienna, just to give us that sort of bluey, browny, grey colour. Just going to sit up there and just, just as you can see, working my hog brush into that, just pushing that dry paint onto the board, but without, um, without, putting, too much, without putting too much paint on um, and really not losing some of that um, shape I've got there already with those clouds. Just a, it's a little bit darker there, I think. Again, you can just see where those gesso marks underneath are, are pulling the paint off. So we've got that feeling of movement, some little brush strokes going into the paint, just giving an idea of the, the sky moving across. Um, I just want to uh, lighten up the horizon and also um, put on these, these lighter clouds going across. So we're going to do that next. So these final bits of the painting, I'm just mixing up a little bit of white with some touch of raw sienna and such a touch of cerulean blue, almost sort of a, a grey colour, grey blue, just to just to, to mix. A, I just wanted something a little bit lighter down here where we've got the the sky meeting meeting the horizon. I might just sort of blend that up a little bit with the sky I got above, just taking that across. But again, not losing everything I've got underneath, just a bit more of a, a layer of cloud happening and then just maybe with some brush strokes just sort of finish that off, feather it off a bit. And I'm just going to add, add in this is my last bit. I want some uh, some lighter clouds just moving across here. So I'm going to, I'm going to start off with a bit of um, white with some raw sienna, a little touch of cerulean. So I want to, to paint these clouds in two goes. So almost a bit of an underpainting. So we're just going to have them running across here. So just going to make some marks just to show where they're going to be. Just pushing back. So this is almost like a little layer of, of clouds that are sitting in front of the, the, the darker clouds that are coming in behind. So just pop a little bit more of that down. Just there. I'm just going to add a bit, a bit of lighter, lighter colour to that. So again, some raw sienna with some white. Tiny touch of cerulean just to take that edge off it so it's not quite, quite so bright. I'm just going to put some marks on as if they're just broken clouds coming across. Again, try, and, try not to be too uh, thoughtful about your brush strokes. You just want to just put the brush on at different angles. Obviously think about the clouds coming from, from left to right. But not, um, not covering up all that colour you've got underneath. And then maybe just a, a couple of bits of, of lighter colour, so a bit more white added to my mix just in areas, just really to sort of pick out the, the cloud that's getting blown across, perhaps just blown off the top of some of these lower clouds that are, that are scudding across. And maybe just a few bits underneath. 
few bits on top this is where the that cloud's breaking up towards the edge just adding a little bit more a bit more of this mix just with a little bit of a little bit of raw sienna a little bit of cerulean and white just to have a slightly sort of darker colour just to give an idea of some some further clouds just a little bit further away just catching the catching the sunlight and I might just feather some of that just back into these clouds just to give an idea of a perhaps a bit slightly more solid solid base to them and then just perhaps with my raw sienna mix just taking that back in to the, the clouds that I've got behind it so that's with a little bit more cerulean so a touch more blue in my mix just to help that almost just go back in in front and I'll just put a few more bits down there there in composition you just want a little bit of cloud just just in front of here Maybe just making that a bit less of a straight line in this cloud, so a little bit of it breaking up just so it goes across. And maybe just a couple of bits down below as well. And there we are. That's my cloudy sky built up in three layers with a base layer as well. So it's got a nice lot of depth to the sky and um, that would make a quite a stunning backdrop hopefully to one of your landscape paintings and I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration.